Hi, and welcome back. Um, this is still chapter three and vectors. This time we're going to get into vector multiplication. Now there are two types of vector multiplication. You have the dot product. Um, let's put that in black. The dot product. And um, you have the cross product. Dot product gives you a scalar result. Cross product gives you a vector result. Um, in this video, we're going to deal with the dot product. And we'll take a break and we'll end our series on this chapter with um, our next video on the um, cross product. Okay, so the dot product, as I set up above, it is, it, you get a scalar result. Um, so think of this, of this multiplication. as the projection of one vector onto another. Remember um, earlier on when I showed you um, a vector, we broke it into components, and I said pretend it's just a light shining down and it's casting a shadow. Well, that's basically what the dot product is doing when you when you dot um, two vectors. So let's see what we mean by that. So let's draw a vector here. I'm going to draw a vector A. All right now, I'm going to draw another vector. We're going to call it B at some angle theta. Okay, so this one is A, this one is B, and there is some angle we're calling theta between them. Now, the question um, we're trying to answer is, how, how much of vector B lies in the same direction as A. Of vector A. Okay, so how much of how much of B lies in the direction of A? Okay, so What we do, just like we did before, is you know thinking about projecting down onto A, like you have a light projecting on and you're gonna get a shadow down here. And you're gonna get a projection of B right up to this point, right? This right here is gonna be the cutoff. You're gonna get B projecting onto A up to here. After that point, there's gonna be no more shadow if you were shining this light down here. Right, so this right here is the projection of B onto A, and that mathematically is B cosine theta. All right, we could also ask how much of vector A lies in the direction of vector B. Okay, we're going to use the same two vectors. So I'm not going to worry about drawing them exactly the same length, but we're going to get the hmm. 
we're going to get them pretty close. Okay, and then vector B starts at the same point and goes up something like that. Okay, so this time we're shining the light. Whoops. This time we're shining the light. Remember, we're always shining the light when we're thinking about this projection perpendicular to the axis we're projecting upon. So up here, the light was shining perpendicular to A. Here, well, let me label these to make it clear. Here, we're going to shine the light perpendicular to B. So it's got to hit A first, but, the, but be shining towards B. So it's, oops. So it's kind of like this. Right, and we still have theta, same angle. We still have theta. All right, now, the thing is, see, this, um, in order for this shadow to hit B, we have to we have to extend B out because it doesn't have to be on B, right? It says how much lies in the direction of B. So we're extending the direction of B out because we have to make this perpendicular here, right? Because of the sh the shadow of A, because the light is coming in perpendicular, like that. Um, so in order for this shadow to hit, um, we have to extend this out so we can visualize it. So right from there to the origin, that is the projection of A in the direction of B. It's on B for some of it, but B is not long enough, but it's in the direction of B. That's what matters. So this is A cosine theta. All right, so this result right here leads us to our generalization of the dot product. When you dot a vector into another, A dot B, your result is the magnitude of the first times the magnitude of the second times the cosine of the angle between them. Okay, this is a scalar result. Um, just to be clear, A, B, is the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B. So that product is the product of the magnitudes of the vector times the cosine of the angle between them. So we want to multiply these vectors, but only the components that lie in the same direction. Okay, so um, note that cosine theta can be positive or negative. Okay, so um, um, yeah, let's look at this. Yeah. No. Here. Okay, so let's take a vector b and a vector a. So we're going to call this one B. We're going to call this one A. And we're going to have theta between them. Okay, here, in this case, cosine theta 
is positive. All right. Now, we're going to keep down here, we're going to look at another case, and we're going to keep B the same. But now, we're going to make A go off this way. This is B. This is A. And now notice that the projection of A and in the direction of B is now negative. Okay, projecting A <clears throat> using the same process, you know, our light shining down on it. When you project that down, it's negative. So here's our angle, here's our cosine theta, or sorry, our theta. So cosine theta in this case is negative. All right, so to summarize, All right, A dotted with B is the same as B dotted with A. You get the same thing. If theta is less than 90 degrees, the dot product is positive. If theta is more than 90 degrees, the dot product is negative. This is for 0 to 180 degrees. Okay, a couple more things. The vector A dotted with itself. Now if we do that out, we get, following our rules, the magnitude of each times cosine of zero, because that's the angle in between. This is one, so this is just the magnitude of A squared. On the other hand, if A is perpendicular to the vector B, A dot B is going to equal 0 because cosine 90 equals 0. Okay, there's no component. There is no component if they're like this. A, B. There's no component of A on B or B on to A. A in the direction of B or B in the direction of A, all right, perpendicular to each other. So um, we should probably look at the unit vectors too. I mean, I'm sure you could figure this out, but just since we're doing a summary page, I dot I equals one, J hat dot J hat equals one, and K hat that it with K hat equals one. So when the unit vectors are the same direction, their dot product equals one. When they are different, it doesn't matter what the combination is, they are always zero. All right. Okay, one more thing. the distributive law. This can be really helpful in solving problems. Distributive law. 
Okay, so if you have a vector dotted with the quantity of this vector plus this vector, a dot the quantity b plus c, that is the same as vector a dotted with vector b plus vector a dotted with vector c. Okay, now remember from before, okay, that we can describe a as ax i the component of a in the y direction, j hat, plus the component of a in the z direction, k hat. So, and remembering that when you dot, only the components in the same direction survive, a dot b is going to be ax bx plus a y b y plus a z b z. Okay, you have three interactions that sum together to make the dot product, three interactions, each in their own dimension, x, y, z. They sum together to form the dot product. Okay, so that's um, that's that product, and we are going to end here. And the next and last video, we will deal with the cross product, which is a vector product. Okay, see you on the flip side.